Welcome into this week's Degrees of Science. This week we're talking about something that has been a lot in the national news as we went through the summer months. We're talking about rip currents, which last year in 2023 killed over 90 people along beaches. Today we're talking to uh, Dr. Greg Dusek. He's a senior scientist and oceanographer at the National Ocean Service. So uh, Dr. Dusek, I guess for people that don't know, what, what exactly is a rip current? Well, rip, rip currents are uh, seaward directed jets of water that can happen anywhere you have breaking waves. So all along the coastal US and even in the Great Lakes. And they're typically maybe, you know, tens of yards wide. Uh, they can extend offshore uh, up to 100 yards or more. So maybe the length of a football field or more. And they can reach speeds exceeding five miles per hour, which I know to most people probably sounds pretty slow, but your top Olympic swimmers average about five miles per hour. So even if you're a strong swimmer, that's something that can cause you a lot of problems. And, and as you mentioned, you know, there are huge public safety risks. Last year, we had uh, at least 90 rip current drownings. That's kind of typical. Uh, we see over 70 every year in the US. Um, and we think the number is probably even closer to 100 per year because some don't go documented. And you know, to put that in context, last year, rip currents were the second greatest uh, weather-related fatality in the US behind only heat. So ahead of flooding, ahead of tornadoes, ahead of hurricanes, you know, rip currents were the second most weather related fatality. So, so there are huge public safety risks. So is there a certain weather setup or ocean setup that, that makes these more prevalent to, to, to happen? Well, the big thing with rip currents is, is because they're caused by breaking waves, it really comes down to what's happening with the waves. And uh, usually what you're looking for are changes in how waves are breaking near shore. And so if you've been to the beach, you might have seen kind of a you know, shallower spots like sandbars close to the beach. Those sandbars can affect how waves are breaking and cause situations where you might have you know, larger breaking waves kind of over a sandbar and then deeper areas where you have less breaking. And, and that sets up this circulation because where you have waves breaking, you're pushing water up on shore. You get higher water levels where you have those waves breaking more and less where you don't. And they, water levels, the water flows downhill and so it flows towards those channels and then offshore creating a rip current. Um, you can also have them caused by structures like jetties or piers, again, because it influences how waves are breaking. And then sometimes you have rip currents just caused by the waves themselves. So you could have a flat bottom, no sandbar in sight, but if you have waves coming at a certain direction, waves coming from two different directions, you can kind of set up those same kind of variations in breaking waves and generate rip currents that can come and go and move along shore and those in particular can be pretty hazardous because they're hard to spot and hard to know when they, they might uh, pop up. So the rip currents have got a lot of national attention this year. How common are they to, to occur along U.S. beaches? You know, they're, ve they're very common. Uh, rip currents call, uh, happen uh, almost all the time. Uh, whether or not they're strong enough to be hazardous is really you know, when you need to be concerned. But, but you only need waves of about you know, two to three feet to kind of start driving rip currents that might cause ha a hazard, might cause the swimmer uh, some distress. And so that's why, you know, you really always have to be mindful for rips. Uh, they can always potentially be around, even when, you know, the weather might be nice. You know, it could be a sunny day where you are, that there's no breeze, uh, there's no storm in sight. But if you have waves coming from a distant storm, uh, you could still have rip currents, uh, which is why we tell people, you know, before you go to the beach, check your rip current uh, forecast information through, through our beach hazards guidance uh, through the National Weather Service so that you can be ready for that potential hazard uh, even, even when otherwise it might look like a nice day. So you're talking about preparing before you get there. So when someone gets to the beach, is there anything that they can look to kind of see that may point out that there's a chance of a rip current? Yeah, I mean, when you show up at the beach, uh, what we tell people is, you know, you don't just jump right down into the sand and run into the water. Uh, you know, when you're close to the water, it's hard to see any hazards, uh, rip currents, waves, anything. When you're close to, the, to where waves are breaking, it's really hard to see. So what we tell you is, you know, when you first arrive at the beach, when you're uh, ideally kind of removed from the water's edge at an elevated position, like a beach access or a boardwalk, uh, that's when you want to look for rip currents. And, and usually what you want to do is look actually for where waves aren't breaking, which sounds counterintuitive. Uh, but what you want to look for are kind of gaps in the lines of breaking waves. And often, sometimes there'll be dark spots. Um, and those are those deeper locations often where you have rip channels uh, and potentially rip currents. 
And then the other thing you can look for is like foam on the water surface because that'll get kind of sucked out uh, to uh, offshore, pulled offshore by a rip current. So lines of foam or even lines of sediment or debris in the water, uh, those can potentially be indications of rip currents as well. But ultimately the best thing you can do if you go to a lifeguarded beach is when you get there, if you're not sure, talk to the lifeguard. You know, lifeguards are experts at these things. They look for rip currents every day. So if you're not sure, ask them, they'll be able to tell you if, if there might be a rip current where you're swimming. So if you're out in the water and you get caught by one of these rip currents, what's the best thing for someone to do if you're caught and get pulled out by this? So the first thing you, you, what you don't want to do uh, is, is just try to swim straight towards shore. Because as I mentioned, you know, rip currents are moving really fast, even if you're an Olympic swimmer. You could try swimming straight to shore and you might not make any progress. So, so you want to just stop, stay calm and relax as hard as that might seem to do. Uh, because what ends up causing a lot of drownings is panic. People you know, either try to swim straight to shore, start panicking, you tire yourself out and then you have some problems. So relax, float and kind of evaluate your situation. If you're a strong swimmer, what we tell people is, you know, swim out of the current along the beach. So you swim along the beach till you kind of feel like you're not being pulled away from shore anymore, and then kind of back to shore at an angle away from the current, letting the breaking waves push you towards shore. If you're not a strong swimmer, or if you're not making a lot of progress, the best thing you can do is float. Rip currents don't suck you under the water, they just pull you away from shore. So if you can just float, stay on the water surface, uh, wave, yell for help, that'll give a chance for someone to rescue you. And even in some cases, uh, rip currents actually circulate. So there's a chance if you just float, you might actually get carried back to where you can touch again. So, so as long as you can float, stay on the water surface, uh, you're gonna be okay. So just take it calm and easy. So let's say you're like me, I'm a parent sitting on the beach and my son or somebody gets pulled out by that. What, what should I do or somebody do to, to, in order to help these people that are caught in a rip current? Yeah, those type of situations happen all the time. And actually, we see something like a quarter or to a third of all rip current drownings are bystanders attempting to make rescues. And in some cases, we even see bystanders go in, they drown, but the person they go to try to save eventually gets out. So that's why we say, you know, the first thing you wanna do is take a few seconds and think. Don't just rush right into the water because that's when you get yourself in trouble. So think, look uh, look for a lifeguard. The best thing you can do is if you see someone in distress, go get a lifeguard. If, they're, if you're not on a lifeguarded beach, you wanna call 911 because even if that person gets out, there's a chance they might need life-saving medical attention. Uh, and then after that, what you would ideally do is get them something that can float. So whether that's a boogie board, a surfboard, even a cooler, if you can get it to them, throw it to them without getting in the water yourself, that's always your best bet. And then if you have to go in, if it's really your only option, you need to have flotation, any sort of a flotation device. Because again, rip currents don't pull you under the water. They're just pulling you away from shore. So if you have a flotation device, you, you will be okay. And you know, even when lifeguards go in to make a rescue, they always have a flotation device with them. So, so that's, that's something you always wanna be mindful of. Well, Dr. Dusek, I appreciate you taking the time to talk with us. I, I learned a lot and I, I think it's great information, not only this summer, but moving forward to keep people safe uh, from uh, these rip currents. Awesome, yeah, great, great to be with you. Thanks for having me.